No, now I've started. All right, so hello, well, here we are. So let's talk about hardware. What about hardware? Hardware is hardware, hardware. As opposed to what? Software. Software? No. We're going to talk about hardware. We're talking about nuts and bolts and screws and washers and things like that. So, all right. So, one of the key things that you have to be able to do is to be able to bolt stuff together. And in 309, it's, it's, I've sort of distilled it down into what you guys are now experiencing. Um, this is actually the second class where I completely revamped it. And the idea now behind 309 is it, it prepares you to start the following week, whether it is in this semester or the other semester. So um, you guys have an engine start. So right away, when you walk in to the engine class uh, on the, the whatever date that is, let me know, 20, 20, 22nd, Tuesday, whatever. <coughs> on the Tuesday, you had better be able to read a micrometer Use T gauges, although you won't have to do it on cylinders anymore. The ball gauges, measure with precision stuff, understand veneer scales. You'd better be able to torque things and properly assemble uh, nuts, bolts, and screws. If you don't, you're going to break your engine. And when you break your engine, I'm going to get very sad. When I get sad, you don't want to see me sad. All right, so. So this class is designed to prepare you to do that. Now the next half of this, this 309 is really going to be focusing on math and electricity, which then prepares you to go into the electricity class. So anyway, but so an aircraft mechanic, aircraft mechanic, and it must be able to, must be able, must be able to properly fasten items. with correct hardware yeah. all right so aircraft <coughs> aircraft use aviation grade hardware which is to say approved hardware. <clears throat> never. It's never. So when can you do it? Never. never use hardware store. Hardware store. Fasteners. So I'm working on my airplane and I, I, I drop a bolt. I can't find a bolt. I drop it and I go to bend it over to pick it up and I kick it across the floor and then zoo seats it and I don't want to follow around until he poops it out. So, um, so I need a bolt. Can I just run down to Lowe's or Home Depot and grab myself a bolt? You can. You're physically capable. Yes. Of course, you got to familiar. Do I just run down to Hollywood Hardware? You're rich. Are we familiar with Hollywood hardware? We are a little too familiar. <laughs> you know, in case I need an engine bolt. Hey, yes. Yeah. And what grade do you use if you needed it? Uh, it's got six things on it. You need the grade eight because it's the same color. All right, so what I'm joking about is people do it. We know it. And down by Executive Airport, there's a place called Hollywood Hardware. Is it still there? Yes. Absolutely phenomenal. I mean, they have all the hardware. This is a hardware store, old school. And... Aircraft hardware, modern hardware, is all CAD-plated gold. So it has kind of a goldish color to it. And if you go to Home Depot or Lowe's or Hollywood Hardware or wherever, and you look at bolts, they're SAE bolts. They're automotive bolts. And they have different grades. What, grade 3, 5, 8, not, is 9? Not know about that, but you have grade 8. So I think it's 3, 5, and 8 maybe. I don't, know, I don't work on cars anymore. So anyway, um, most of you like grade 3 and 5, your lower grades. They're not CAD plated, but if you go to a hardware store, the, the grade eight, the really good bolts, they're all CAD plated gold. So you get a grade eight hardware bolt and it's really hard to tell the difference uh, just you know, across the room. But anybody who knows aviation hardware will pick it up and look at the head mark and just go, yeah, this is a grade eight SAE bolt. You know, where'd you get that? Uh, from the, 
aircraft supply store? Yeah, no, you didn't. So don't do that. Um, and the approval, who does the approval? Okay, so, and that's the funny thing. Now, back in the day, we would just order a bunch of bolts, and we would get it from an approved source, and we would trust that the approved source would get from approved vendors and on down the line. But anymore, you buy bolts, uh, you get a bag, it's got a traceability tag, it's got where they came from, it's got all kinds of information, so you have to have that approval tag, and so you have to keep the approval tag with your bolts, and so it, paperwork is really deep in aviation, really important. So, like in the hardware that we have here at the school, it is aviation hardware, but it's been around for so long, we don't even traceability tags, so I really can't even go in there if I needed a bolt, and so oh, I'll just, you know, it's, you can tell by the head markings that it's a, a, a bolt, it's proper, but can't really take that. Yeah? Are there any physical locations you can get the uh, proper hardware, or do you have to get it <coughs> online or from certain... There's nothing left around here. You can maybe go to an aircraft... Uh, fixed base... No, well, I was going to say fixed base operator and ask them if you can buy a bolt and charge it eight times what it costs. But no, not anymore. Not since Sky Ranch closed. Uh, let's see. Aircraft hardware. Aircraft. Now, I'm not going to teach you all about aircraft hardware, but just enough so that you can be dangerous. Hardware is classified by a specific part number. Part number. Specific part number. <coughs> And it can be several di different designators now. So the first designator, and this is the oldest one and the one I'm familiar with and I like the best, is an <coughs> AN bolt. We just actually call it an AN bolt. That's the name we've given it. So what does AN stand for? American National. Ooh, yeah, that's a pretty good guess. But you're wrong. Stands for Army, Navy. Now some books say Air Force, Navy, but um, let's see, the Air Force was founded, I looked this up, the Air Force was founded in 1947, and A.N. Hardware predates that, so I say it's Army, Navy. And the Air Force guys are just trying to get in on this. All right, then there's MS. What's MS? Military. Military spec. And now we have NAS. National Aerospace Standards. All right, so it gets a little confusing because things have changed throughout the year. So at first, some parts were like an AN part. So uh, let me think. We had rivets. So we had a rivet, which would be an, an AN 470 AD 4-4. I just made up, that's an actual, a rivet. So, so they did that. Okay, so, you know, everybody got used to it. I want an AN 470 rivet. And then they came along and said, well, no, 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 we don't want to do A anymore. We want to do MS. And I'm okay with that in some places because they said, well, we got to change the number. We just can't call it an MS 470. Well, that'd be crazy. Oh, we got to change it. So let's call it an MS 2470 AD 4-4. Oh, okay, that's totally different, right? You just added the MS and the 20. Um, then you come along with NAS, and then uh, rivets didn't go to NAS. Rivets stopped at uh, MS. Um, gosh, like washers, like a regular washer is like an AN4, 460? Uh, that's not right. I can't remember washer partner right off the top of my head right now. But anyway, um, you have an AN, and it just made sense. It's a three-digit number. What's an AN, AN washer? AN. I got nothing. It'll come to me. But anyway, then it switched to NAS, which is a very long part number. made no sense. All the NAS stuff is like, whoa, where'd you come up with that? So that's just the way it is. So anyway, so you have to kind of get used to the fact that it may be called an AN, an MS, or an NAS. And sometimes you can get the same thing. We'll have both an AN and an MS and an AS, NAS part number, and they're all different across the board. But it's the same part. Sucks, get used to it. That's right. You know it, they don't, they confuse. I, I call most things by the AN part number. It's just what I do, so sorry about that. 
but I'm not. Okay, most hardware, hardware is made of steel, is made of steel. Um, it can be uh, stainless, maybe stainless, which is silver in color. Silver in color. We would call that corrosion resistant. I can write that corrosion. So it's a shiny silver, right? Like your, like your spoons. Well, maybe you guys use plastic spoons. I don't know. Um, and it could be CAD plated, cadmium plated, C A D, cadmium plated. Cadmium plating is uh, corrosion resistant. Like I said, what color did I say that was? Gold. Okay. So usually it's gold in color. All of the newer stuff is gold in color. Older stuff was silver or gold. So if it's silver, how do you know if it's CAD plated steel silver, which is actually called clear, um, or stainless? Now it's kind of hard to tell, but you just, get, you just have to get used to seeing them. So, all right. So a proper bolted item, bolted item <coughs> will have the following characteristics. Will, one, have the correct length bolt. Have the correct length bolt. Uh, it's going to be a big one. I'm going to catch a lot of you on this. And I will go nuts. Use the correct washers. What's a washer? A little circle of metal. It's not the thing your mom's cleaning your clothes in. Right? Use the cor correct washers to prevent damage. To prevent damage. To the part. All right, so what are aircraft hardware? What's it made out of? Steel. steel. steel not stainless steel. Most, most of it's regular steel. CAD plated regular steel. Okay, so I have a steel part. What are most things in an aircraft made out of? Aluminum, Aluminum or magnesium or something that is not as strong as the bolt. So if I have a steel <coughs> bolt or a steel nut, and I'm rotating that nut against my aluminum part, which is the first thing that's going to get damaged, the steel or the soft aluminum? The aluminum. So you never, ever, never twist a nut against the aluminum part of the aircraft. What do you put between the nut and the aircraft part? A washer. Okay, so you always have to put a what there? Washer. So nobody in this class is going to make the mistake of not putting a washer, right? Okay. Yeah, I like Anna. Can't promise. One goes between the bolt head and what you're working with, and the one before the nut. Yes. So, all right. So if I have, let's see, I'll put two parts together. Part here and a part here. Of course, now I got to drill a hole through it. Whoosh. Drill a hole through it. There's my hole. All right, through the magic of this, I want to put a bolt on here. What's the first thing that has to go through? First, I have to have a washer. First, you've got to put a washer. That's a clear washer, right? A clear washer? No. Oh, yeah. So we got to put a washer down. A washer, of course, if I look at it here, it's got a hole in the middle, and that's like that. It's like all donut. solid. It's like, a, yeah, it's like a donut without sprinkles. All right, so we got a washer. Then I'm going to put the bolt through there. I don't know if bolt can be. Bolts are pink, right? So put the bolt through there. Now the cool thing about aircraft hardware is they're actually parallel. Um, you go to an aircraft, or aircraft, you go to the hardware store <laughs> and you may get a bolt that's got threads all the way up to the head. Maybe it's got some thre halfway threads. Aircraft bolts are pretty much all made the same. They only have just enough threads on the end to accept a few washers and the nut. That is it. And the reason why is because you really want this part here, the shank, See how there's no threads? 
you want the no thread part inside what you're bolting because that's the strong part and you have this so anyway so we got another washer down here so we got a washer right there we have a washer right there and then we put the nut on all right so then the nut comes down here there's the nut everything in aviation has to be safetyed in some way so if i have a plain nut i'm going to put a lock washer if i have a castellated nut and a bolt i'll use a cotter pin or i'll use a self-locking nut more on that later so remember everything's got to be safety not everything almost everything it's a very good drawing, what's that it's a good, it's a good drawing are you making fun of me no i'm serious <laughs> <laughs> you know the lines on the nut really they kind of they made it they really, they, they really brought it together didn't yeah, it they did. yeah. <laughs> The irony here is Katie's actually a good artist. I'm not. <laughs> All right. Uh, let me see. Where am I? Two. Uh, correct. Have the correct washer, but damage to the part. Got that. Uh, and we'll just say never allow <coughs> allow a nut, a nut, lock washer, <laughs> or bolt to rotate against an aluminum part. To rotate against an aluminum or magnesium or something like that part. <coughs> so if you're going to put a lock washer on it, you'd have to put a regular washer Then you have another washer, yep. Um, where am I? Oh, I said this. Nice. Have the rotated part, rotated part, Whatever's the part that, that rotates, safety. Which means you're either going to use safety wire, safety wire, which I showed you today, a cotter pin, a self locking nut, or a lock washer. You should have at least one of those on almost all bolted parts. There's some exceptions. What's that word after part? Rotated safety. part? Safety. Safety. <coughs> all right, bolts. Let's get back to bolts. Help you identify them. And we're only going to talk about standard bolts. There are a lot of different kind of bolts. There's, uh, can't think of a single one. <laughs> I can see them all in my head. There is uh, close tolerance bolts. There's uh, magnetic particle inspector bolts. There's clevis bolts. There's I bolts. There's NAS bolts. There's, uh, did I say close tolerance bolts? High shear strength bolts. But we're just going to talk about your run of the mill standard bolts. They can come in several different flavors. They may be undrilled, that is, to the shank, so to speak the thread portion actually um, they may have let's say have may have the head drilled the head you have the head drilled um, of course then they may be drilled so that may have the threads drilled And let me think. We'll talk about this. Some of the nomenclature here. Nomenclature. Um, grip. Grip is a word you're going to see quite often, especially in riveting. The grip length. <coughs> grip length is the unthreaded portion. <coughs> Unthreaded portion. And this is the thickness of the items being bolted together. Uh, the, items, <coughs> the items being bolted together.
over here. All right, so what did I say the grip length is? The unthreaded part. The unthreaded part. And the grip is supposed to be the dimension of the, the items you're bolting together. All right? So when you get into sheet metal, you have to, how you figure out the length of a rivet is you figure out the grip plus 1.5 times the diameter. You don't need to remember that, but it's the grip. So it's a grip plus. What is grip? Well, it's the unthreaded part of the bolt. What is it on the aircraft? <coughs> it's the items you're bolting together. So if I'm bolting together uh, two pieces of quarter inch aluminum, what is my grip? Half an inch. Okay, that's one way they say the grip. The grip is half an inch. It's the dimension of the items bolted together. Now I'm talking about a bolt, and I pick up a bolt, and I go, well, what's the grip of the bolt? It is the unthreaded parts. Look at the picture. All right, so it's the same word, two different meanings. Meaning one is the thickness of the items being bolted together. Meaning two is the unthreaded portion. Okay, so notice this right here. It says nominal length. Okay, uh, I kind of struggle with how to describe the word nominal. Nominal means like average or what it's supposed to be. So if I said this bolt is supposed to be, it's a one inch bolt. It's one inch nominal. It means it's that's one inch, and you measure it. Goes, hey man, this bolt isn't one inch. It's like one point, you know. And you kind of, yeah, I, they know that. They, um, when you mass produce bolts, it's very, very expensive if they had to make them all exactly one point zero 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 zero, right? So it's about one inch. That's what nominal means. Eh, it's about, or you know, that's the best I can do for you there. So nominal length. Notice that the <coughs> nominal length does not include the head. Okay. Because we don't care about that. We're thinking about, okay, I'm going to bolt something together. The first thing I have to figure out is the, the grip of what I'm bolting together. Then I can go over to the bolt, and I can also say match the grip to that. So the two should match, right? And so the threads are then sticking out of the end, and that's where everybody's happy. Yes? Okay. So I said the bolts could have a drilled shank. It could not have a drilled threads. So drilled threads or undrilled threads. Drilled threads, undrilled threads. It could have a drilled head. What's the drilled head for? Safety wire. Safety wire. In case I don't have a nut and I'm just screwing the bolt into to something and there's no nut on the other side, then I got a safety safety nut. What is this hole here for? For a cotter pin. Yeah, or maybe safety wire. Depending. All right, we'll get back to that. So, <laughs> items being bolted together. How are we going to size it? Now, this is where you really want to know. Yes. Oh, can you go back? Yeah. What is it? <coughs> what is it for safe? Here, nomenclature. Oh. I don't think, why don't I just write that way all the time? Because <laughs> he knows how to be very quiet. And <laughs> yeah, well. Okay, so where you need to go with all of this is first thing is, well, how do you figure out the size of a bolt? Because in class, in lab, your project, you're going to be given a series of five bolts, and you have to identify the bolt. Then you have to figure out how to torque it. And the torque is going to be based on the size of the bolt. Now, I'm going to say it now. I'll probably never say it again. <laughs> She's already laughing because she knows what I'm going to say. <laughs> bolt size is not the wrench size. Nope. The wrench size is not the bolt the size. The wrench size is not the bolt size. Everybody say that. The wrench the size, size is not the bolt size. size. And I'm going to show you what happens. When you, well, I'll tell you right now, and I'll show you in, in numbers. But if you accidentally mistake that and you say, well, I've got a half inch socket or a half inch wrench, therefore that must be a half inch bolt, you will twist it until either the bolt breaks, the part you're screwing it into breaks, or it just strips. And what's the, what do I mean by strips out? Ah, you're like, it's getting tighter. Boy, this is really tight. I'm really shocked. Oh, now it's loose. So it's like, okay. Uh, which rings, if you're a mechanic, one of my favorite jokes is what's the, what's the absolute tightest you can make a bolt? Tighten it until it gets loose and back it off a quarter turn. <laughs> That, you either get that or you don't. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm going to move this over. If you don't now, you will someday. Yeah, you'll, you'll get it. You'll be like, oh, be I get that. 
Tighten those loose. All right. Yeah, perfect. No, loose. Throw the wrench. Sizing bolts. All right. Standard hardware. Standard hardware is sized by width and length. Width and length. Width and length. The width, where am I going to measure the width? The head or the shank? shank? You got it, not the head. Width is expressed in one sixteenth inch increments. Increments. <coughs> The length is expressed in eighths. <coughs> One eighth inch increments. All right, so here we go. So if I had an AN four dash six. I'm going to look at that. So it's an AN bolt. And this is the way AN, it's really nice how the part numbers work. So it's just, it just says AN, and you get a 4. And the 4 right there tells me the width. The width. And this is the length. And the width is in what? Sixteenths. And the length is in? Eighths. All right. So if I looked at that, you'd be able to tell me that's a bolt. That is how wide? Quarter. All right, so it's four sixteenths, which is the same as one fourth. So it's a quarter inch wide bolt. And the length is six eighths or three fourths. I'm going to stop and show you something right now. Everybody gets calculated out. <coughs> Who loves fractions? Nope. You will. You got your calculator? Okay, you notice how I, so I said 4 sixteenths is equal to 1 quarter. Some of you just knew that. And others are like, oh, God, I don't even know. I don't even want to know. I hate it, right? Everybody want to fess up to that one? Okay, my, my goal is to teach you how to use this to the point where you love numbers. You're like, bring it on. All right, so there's, there's keys on here. I don't even know half of them, but I know the ones that, will, that you need to know to get through your test real easy. So, 4 sixteenths, all right? So, I said that the width was 4, which is sixteenths, right? But you can probably remember to put 4 over 16, yes? Okay, but I want to reduce that fraction so it's 1 quarter, because if I go up to the tool room window and say, James, I need a 4 sixteenths <coughs> bolt, he's going to go, yeah, I don't have any 4 sixteenths. Go away and try again. All right. So everybody's got. I wish I could do this on a big screen. I can't. So over on the left, uh, left top, you have a second button. Okay, that's gonna be an important button to us. Um, so move over one. You have DRG, uh, PRB, uh, ABC. Okay, I want that ABC button. So I'm gonna put the number four. Second person. No, no, no. Just follow me on this. I'm gonna move this down a little bit. Okay. So I'm gonna hit the number four. Four, and then I'm gonna hit this button. It's A, B, C, okay? Four, A, B, C. And then I'm gonna hit this button right here, 16. Well, that's not 16, it's one and a six, sorry. One and six, four, four. All right, so you should see four comma 16, all right? Um, that same button, if you hit second, you will see that it says, um, there's a couple of things. There's uh, A, B, C, uh, two, and there's some arrows, um, D, E, okay, that's, that's a way to um, change stuff around, we're going to use that a lot, and there's also above it, you have F um, to D, that's fraction to decimal, all right, so what I'm going to do, uh, hopefully I'm right here, but I know I can get, it. I'm going to hit second, um, A, B, C, and hit enter, So try it again. So it's four, A, B, C, 16. You have this, right? You should see that. Then hit second. And then hit A, B, 
BC, and it should reduce it for you to four, oh, sorry, uh, one comma four. Actually, mine says one slash four. Which uh, you don't have, okay, yours is different. It's fine, I, I figured it out. Okay, so that one's a little bit different, but that's, okay, that's how we do it. Um, let's just say now, now I want to know the decimal equivalent of one quarter. Well, the decimal equivalent is one divided by four, so I could do one divided, but I don't want to do that. Just stop where you are. Hit the second, FD, which is also the PRB button. FD, F, comma D, it's, um, if you hit the second, I'll always talk about what's, what's in small print. So, and it says answer, uh, mine says answer, arrow F, comma D equals, and it says 0.25, which means fraction of decimal. Got it? Yes, got it. Now, it just so happens uh, if I wanted to say, um, what is the decimal equivalent of 0.125? Uh, you guys probably know that, but I'll just put in 1.25 and go, well, Kevin wants to know the decimal equivalent. I'm going to hit second, FD equals, and it's to say one eighth. How about that? Okay, if I want to make a decimal into a fraction, punch in the punch in whatever you want. So I just did 0.125, and then I hit the second, and then I hit the F D uh, equals, and it says one eighth. Yeah. Dial caliper? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Decimal. Decimal. Ah, okay, thank you. So that's a good point. You're going to be using. You're going to be using this tool to measure your bolts. Don't try doing it with the ruler. It's just, it's round and the ruler's flat. It doesn't work. You're going to be off. Do yourself a favor. Just Get one of these, right? They're in the tool room. We have this one and also the, the, uh, um, the veneer style. Ask for a dial one. They're just so much easier to read. If you don't know how to read it, um, James or Kelly or myself will help you. What, what is this called? A dial caliper. All right, so I'm working on a dial caliper and I measure it and it says, um, let me think, 0.375. So now I need to know the fraction equivalent, right? So I'm going to hit second, fraction to decimal, then I get, ah, it's a 3 eighths bolt, look at that. But the chances are you're not going to get 0.375. You're going to get something like 3.8. So you go, well, I'm just 0 0.38, 0 0.38, and I hit second, fraction decimal, and it comes up to 1950s. I have no idea what to do at 1950s. I, you know, you're, so, um, fraction decimal, let's see, oops. Um, let me try this one. No, it won't do it. I was hoping to hoping it would like give me some to round it. So you just have to round at that point, <coughs> or just get a, um, a chart. But you'll be able to get really close with that. I'll figure out a fast way for you. Question. Yeah. Can do they have to be proficient with the this type of dial caliper if they had their own digital that they brought? Oh, if you got a digital you brought, use it. So my advice is. <laughs> This is a place to invest. It doesn't necessarily need to be today, but I have a really nice digital that does fraction, decimal, mm -hmm. this and that, and, trend, and then that's something you will yeah. need to have. So, so quick question: uh, uh, <coughs> Being in this program as students, are we offered any type of discounts with any? Yeah, Snap On gives you fifty percent off. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> I only know. If, oh no. Um, ooh, Sears doesn't sell craft, Craftsman anymore. I don't think. No. Sears, Lowe's yeah. Craftsman, no. Um, Craftsman did have a program, but it moved to Lowe's. I don't know if it does it. Um, you can't just walk on the Snap-on truck though. You have to call our rep for the school who is in charge of student uh, accounts. You create an account with them, and it's fifty percent off. And it's. I mean, you can buy giant toolboxes and stuff for 50% off. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, what's the... <laughs> well, now, okay, I need you guys to think for a second. Is this really where you want to spend your time right now? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Is, is me stopping this, when you have a test tomorrow, 
we're talking about the snap-on guy. If you if, if you feel that it is, nope. Fair enough. Oh, no. <laughs> so all right, so be conscious of this because you know he's not working right now. <laughs> no, but I'll get you his stuff. Don't worry about it. You can always see me after class. Say so, hey, let's get that stuff. Okay, so back to this. So we've got bolts. We've got they come in what widths? So what is the increments? Yeah, Sixteenths, okay, so the smallest is going to be three sixteenths, all right? A lot of your charts are going to call this a number 10 because screws go two, four, six, eight, ten. That's the biggest screw, and then three sixteenths starts after there. So three sixteenths is also a number 10 screw. That's why you may not find three sixteenths on the charts. So if you can't find three sixteenths on the chart, you're going to be looking for a number 10. Okay, so three sixteenths, what comes next? Three sixteenths, quarter, quarter. Okay, quarter. Then we have five sixteenths. Then we have three eighths, right? And so on down the line. All right, links. All right, uh, length. You know what? I need some room for lengths. Lengths are long. All right. What, what does the that A B C button stand for? Uh, it's a fraction. It stands for a fraction. fraction. Look, it's a fraction. Like one and one quarter. A, B, C. You see the correlation? Okay. Uh, okay. So length. Like length is in what increments? One eighths. Okay, so it's going to go like this. So I believe the smallest is three eighths. So it's the dash. So we have a four dash three. Four means it's what? Good quarter inch. Okay. Now this is the length. So that would be three eighths. So dash four is going to be four eighths. Dash five is going to be five eighths. Dash six is going to be six eighths or three quarter. Dash seven is going to be Seven eighths. Dash eight is going to be one. wrong. There's no dash eight. Okay, so it goes up to seven. It's, it's, then it's going to change formulas. Okay, then it's going to go. Okay, there's no eight and there's no nine. So forget about it. But you can still go up to the tool room and ask James if you can have a dash eight or a dash nine. Just see what, see what happens there. Let me know. Okay, the next one is a ten. Which equals one inch. And no eights. That should make sense. Then what comes after 10? 11. Uh, 11 is correct. One inch and one eighth. And then it's 12, which is going to be one inch and two eighths. And 13, and 14, and 15, and 16, and 17. And then dot, dot, dot. 17 for 1 inch and 7 eighths. What comes after 17? You got it, 20. Which is 2 inch and 0 eighths. See the formula? That's not hard, is it? Oh gosh, you're just gonna be, you're just gonna give me a bad time, aren't you? <laughs> 2, I try to save a minute, inch and no eighths. <laughs> yes. Okay, so why isn't there an 18th anymore? Uh, same reason why. Because what is what is eight eighths in in numbers? That would equal one. Okay. All right. So I got to make sure you understand this. Is, this doesn't exist because eight eighths would equal one, but we don't do that. We'd use a ten, and nine eighths would be. Uh, one and an eighth, but we don't use that because we use 11. So okay. there's no, those don't exist. So we always stop it. No, there's no eight, no nine in lengths. They, they don't play with like improper fractions. That's right. They don't do improper fractions. All right. Let's see, where do we go here? Um, well, just a quick, uh, what is an AN? And six dash eleven. Half 
How fat is she? I shouldn't say fat and personified as a, as a lady. That's not polite. How fat is that dog? Well, I know it's six eighths. And if I want to reduce that, I don't know. What do I do? Get out my calculator. I'm going to put uh, clear. Six. Sixteenth. Sorry. My bad. <coughs> I would have figured it out. Six. Six. A B C. Sixteenths. And then second. A B C again. And it says three eighths. So three eighths. If I didn't know. Three eighths. And how long is it? One and one eighth inches long. All right. That's not hard, is it? All right. Well, there we go. That says Air Force. It's wrong. So it just has an AN abbreviation. Now, the nice thing of these bolts, they never went to MS. They uh, kind of do an NAS now, but really, it's just an AN bolt. So you can still call it that. So um, that is the uh, width in sixteenths, and that is the length in eighths. All right, now the dash, and I'm not going to get too much in this with you guys, but I just want you to know this. Um, the dash is the bolt material. So it can be a dash, which means it's regular CAD plated. You can have a C, which means it's corrosion resistant, which means it's made out of stainless. stainless all right. Uh, or you can put an H here, which means the head is drilled. I want you to know this one, though. A means absent the hole. It means there's no hole in the shank where the threads are. So A means absent the hole. Absent the hole. Right. Well, that's the hole you're talking about is the cotter pin. Yep, that's the cotter pin hole. A, so is, if there's an A, is there a hole? <coughs> nope. It means there's no hole. So if there's an A in 4-20, is there a hole? Yeah. There is. Then add an A and get rid of the hole. All right. Then we get into threads per inch. So this is a little uh, threads per inch gauge. All right. And it counts how many of these little threads there are per inch. inch. All right. Most... All aircraft hardware just happens to be fine thread. AN hardware is fine thread. There's some course out there, but it's not very much. So if you have to throw some money down on, on a bet, you better bet it's probably going to be fine thread. And just so happens this one has a 12, so that means there's 12 threads per inch. All right, so if there's 12 threads per <coughs> inch, let me see. That was probably a 9 16 coarse thread bolt because I can look right here. This number on the edge, like that says 8 36, 10 32, 14 28. The dash number is how many threads per inch? So you look, what's a 10 32 in bolt size? 3 16. Yeah, uh, 3 16 is correct. How many threads per inch do we have on a fine thread? This is fine right there. Fine thread. How many threads per inch on a 3 16 inch bolt? What if there were 24 threads per inch? Ooh, then it's a coarse one right there. All right, follow me on this. So here's the thing. Um, you can use these numbers and the sizing to your advantage. If I want to know the threads per inch of something, I am not going to take out, I have a picture of this tool. Uh, well, I don't have the full picture. This tool has got uh, a lot of, it opens up and there's probably, I don't know, 20 of these little little teeth right here, these little combs. I'm not going to go through all 20 of them. I'm going to measure first to go, whoa, it's a quarter inch. So if it's a quarter inch bolt, I have a choice between? It's either 28 or it's 20. I'm going to pull out two. Either the 28 fits or the 20 fit, uh, 28 or the 20 fits. And from there, I'm just going to go, it's coarse or fine. If it's an AN bolt, it's going to be what? Fine, fine anyway, yeah. Yeah. How, how would you know uh, which one you need? That's what I just said. So you could take it, open them all up, and you could try every single one of them until you get the one that works. Well, I'm not doing that. Or I can measure the bolt. And if I measured it and I said it's a 5 16 inch bolt, I've only got two choices. Okay. So I've narrowed it down to two. And that's really fast. <coughs> all right. Okay. So, but yeah. isn't there a difference between the fine and the coarse? Sure. 
So, right here. Like, if you look at the, the bolt itself? Oh, yeah. yeah. Once you get used to bolts, you can just look at them. Well, that's coarse. Fine, fine, yeah, coarse. Yeah, yeah. You know. Oh, okay. But when you don't know, that's when you use the tools to help you find out. Is this chart the only place the dash number will be the TPI instead of a length? Because before, when we were talking about the measurements. Okay, these, these are not bolts, per se. That's an AN part number. Mm -hmm. This is not an AN part number. Okay. This is a diameter and threads per inch. Okay, that's what you see at the hardware store, right? Like when you're yeah, that's yeah. Exactly what you see that's what you store. see in the hardware store. Hey, these are the quarter 20 bolts, these are the quarter 28 bolts, right? But in aircraft hardware, <laughs> if I wanna go to the tool room or call up and order a bolt, I say, hey, I need an AN 5-10. Okay. And they go, oh, you want a 5 16 one inch long. These are not, so yeah, it's a good, good point that you caught that, but. Uh, Okay, the wrench size is not the what? Head size. No, the wrench is the head size. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so let me think here. Uh, let me see. Uh, three, three eighths, seven sixteenths. Here, this one right here, if I'm not mistaken. This one right here takes a half inch bolt. Five sixteenths, I'm sorry, takes a half inch wrench. Half inch wrench. You see that? So 5 16 takes a half inch wrench. So here I am working with a 5 16 inch bolt. Now this is how you read this. Fine thread. So we've got either a tension type nut or a shear type nut. Tension nuts is, uh, something bolted in tension is when you have two parts bolted in tension, they wanna come apart this way. So you need to bolt through and you need a thick bolt and a thick, or you have a bolt and a thick nut because it's trying to rip the nut off the head, right? So it's a very tall nut. Shear is when you have two plates that want to do this. So really, you could just tape the bolt in. I mean, you put a piece of masking tape on there, duct tape, and it would keep it in there and keep that from doing that, right? Well, we don't do that, but you just use a little tiny nut because we're trying to save weight. So it's a little tiny nut because the parts aren't going this way. So if you have a little tiny nut, that's a shear nut. So shear nuts use much lower torque. So if I look at this, the torque here, I don't know if you can see that, is 100 to 140 inch pounds. And that literally means that many pounds on a bar that's one inch. But of course, we don't use a one inch bar, we use a longer bar not to use much. Okay, but a shear is 80, 80, I'm sorry, 60, 60 to 85. That's a lot less, right? Okay, so let's just say we've got this bolt, I've got it in a tension type environment. So I should torque it to how much? 100 to 140. Over here, it's got the maximum. Do not exceed, which is 225. So the most is 225. But you didn't go to this A&P school. You went to another A&P school, and nobody ever mentioned that the wrench size is not the bolt size. And so they look at their wrench and go, oh, I have a half-inch wrench. Therefore, I should be looking at the half-inch torque, correct? That's what they think. And they go, well, look at that. I should torque it to 480 to 690 inch pounds, but better yet, I'm just, I'm the super mechanic, so I'm just gonna go to what it should be, the maximum. So there we are, oops, 1100 inch pounds on that poor little bolt that really wanted to be at 100 to 140. So do you think that's going to create a problem? And you can tell because the bolt starts getting longer and longer and longer, and then it snaps. Yes? So in that range, is there a, like, should you aim for the higher end of that range? Or okay. The end or? Excellent question. The reason why there is this range, and this is going to come into play for you, if you have a regular nut or a self-locking nut where you can stop at any position, I, I guess it just depends on what, what the application is, but I usually go about, I, would, I usually go to the high end of the, the, um, this one right here, I'd go 140. The high end of the uh, recommended. All right, but if I have a castellated nut, castellated nut, like this right here, all right, I have to line up that stupid hole with these little paws. Oh, that's annoying. All right, it's not so annoying. All right, that, is, so if I don't stop it at the right spot, I'm never gonna get that cotter pin in there. So let's go back up. So what am I gonna do? I'm going to start at 100. I will torque that nut to 100 inch pounds, the lowest acceptable. And then I'm going to look and say, does my hole line up? 
No, it doesn't. All right, well, if it does, I'm just gonna shove a cotter pin in and call it a day. If it doesn't line up, then I'm gonna say, well, I'm gonna to torque it up to 140 to see if I can get the nut to line up. And if I don't, then I'm gonna to go to 225 and see if, I, up to 225 and see if I can't get it to line up. Hopefully at somewhere around 160, 180, it'll all line up and you'll say, fine, that's good, and put the cotter pin in. What happens if you get all the way to 225 and it didn't line up? Take it off, add a washer, or add, put on a different washer, try a different nut, do something different and retry. Okay, you, can't, you cannot exceed this. When can you exceed this number? Yeah. Oh, only when you're trying to kill someone. All right. So, all right. So the wrench size is not the bolt size. Bolt size. Okay. Yes. Oh. Um. Well, I just happen to know it. So. 10.32 is uh, 3 eighths, uh, quarter is 7 sixteenths. Uh, this would be half inch. That makes this 9 sixteenths. Um, that would make this then uh, 5 eighths. Uh, there's a, a book, Genuine Aircraft Hardware book, that you can check out of the tool room. Genuine Aircraft, I'll show it to you. I'm not going all the way to the tool room. Okay. So there's no point in the tool room. This is a wonderful book, but I'm going to caution you that it is complicated and sometimes overly complicated to the point where even I get a little confused and disagree with what they have to say. But I believe there is a page in here. Um, here we go. Page one. <laughs> It has a little chart in it, and it says right here, AN4, thread pitch diameter, quarter 28. It has, this is where it gets too much for you. Max diameter, minimum diameter, it's, instead of the nominal, it gives you actual. Wrench size, 7 sixteenths, the whole shank, the whole head, the commonly used cotter pin, commonly used stainless cotter pin. So this has, all, Genuine Aircraft is where I buy my hardware, so they've got all, all kinds of hardware and stuff. But again, it, you kind of almost have to know hardware before you can start using it too much because it's really complicated. But that's more of the Aero 300 class you get into that. I just need you to know the basics because I want you to be able to torque engines together without blowing them apart. Where am I here? Go back to here. And tell you what, it is actually time for you to take a break. Mm -hmm.